Dr. Owen Brink for Blue Ridge Family Practice. We're going to discuss the evolution of the brain and how it's tied together with addiction and how early addiction was formed in the human brain. Let's start with a review of the major anatomical brain structures involved in the disease of addiction. This is the brain, sliced in half from top to bottom, dividing the right and left sides. This is the view of the inside or medial aspect of the right part of the brain. Here you can see where the spinal cord would be. It comes up to the middle oblong where the medulla oblongata, and then into the pons with its two connections to the cerebellum and what is called the arbor vitae or the tree of life structure right in here. The structure known as the locus reulus would be located right there where the pointer is. If you look at the brain as a whole, you can see how the brain evolved, starting from the spine, spinal cord to the midbrain up to the forebrain. It sort of takes an S-shaped form. There's a bony shelf right in this area so that the brain would grow up along and then fold over back here. Now, in a reptile such as an alligator, the brain would pretty much be right here, and that'd be about all there is to it. As we grew evolutionarily, the rest of the brain evolved. So when we're dealing with the disease of addiction, you can see the hippocampus, the amygdala. These areas right in this area here are still fairly primitive structures within the brain, and they are very old structures, evolutionarily speaking. These are the structures that deal with our emotions and the addiction process is very much involved in all of this area, the nucleus accumbens included. The hypothalamus is right here. Below the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland, the master gland for the entire endocrine system. As you work your way up along here, there's a structure called the corpus callosum that we cannot quite see. What this is, it's a big structure of fibers that interlace the left and the right cortices, cerebral cortices of the brain the upper reasoning areas where more complex reasoning happens and more advanced evolutionarily advanced species. The frontal cortex, the parietal cortex, temporal cortex would be down here, occipital cortex would be back here. Uh, these cortices or cortex on one side, cortices are on both sides. Uh, this is what separates us from the lower animals. Here would be the parts of the temporal aspect a cortex of the right side of the brain. We can look at the inside part of it, the medial part of it. There are also some ventricles in here that are filled with fluid. But as a gross review, this is basically what our brain looks like. And this will give you an idea that addiction really starts out in a very primitive portion of the brain. Just to give you a review of the neighborhood on a gross or large scale of the brain structure, which by definition is neuroanatomy, the review of the anatomical terms we're talking about. Superior means toward the top or above. Inferior toward the bottom or below. Anterior would be to the front. Posterior would be toward the rear. The medial lobe or middle and then you've got lateral to the sides. There's right, left, or bilateral would be both sides. The brain evolved, as I mentioned, from a swelling at the superior top part of the spinal cord into the primitive hindbrain region. With further development, the brain would occur in the anterior superior manner that I described earlier. Folding would become necessary to fit it within the bony confines of the skull. Later in the developmental process, evolutionary, over e eons of time, the cerebral cortex or cortices left and right would branch out to the sides. The medulla oblongata is the middle oblong, the enlargement at the top of the spinal cord. It controls cardiac, respiratory, vomiting, vasomotor, or blood pressure centers. It's basically concerned with the autonomic nervous system and functions of breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. Pons, the word means bridge in Latin. Its major functions are sleep, respiration, breathing, swallowing, bladder control, hearing, equilibrium, 
taste, eye movement, posture, facial expressions, and facial sensation. It connects to the cerebellum for motor coordination and other functions. The locus rilius is between the pons and the cerebellum. There are many changes in this part of the brain that happen uh, with those prone to addiction. These changes are passed along genetically. And the midbrain is a relatively new part of the brain developed over the past 250 million years, that's new, after the appearance of the hindbrain, which preceded it. The midbrain includes the emotional and behavioral centers, of the limbic system composed of the amygdala and hippocampi. Uh, they are on both sides of the brain. The functions of the midbrain, vision, hearing, motor control, sleep, wake, arousal, alertness, and temperature regulation. The diencephalon, or forebrain, it's up toward the top of that S-curve that we talked about and below the corpus callosum. This is still considered somewhat primitive brain because the cerebral cortex has not yet been reached. That's the home of the higher intelligent functions. The diencephalon contains the thalamus, which can be thought of as a router or switchboard where a lot of information passes through the thalamus to other parts of the brain. The hypothalamus, which connects to the pituitary, the pituitary, which controls all the endocrine system, hormones all over the body, and the basal ganglia, which are again part of the switchboard apparatus. They're located below and to the front of the forebrain. Uh, the basal ganglia and diencephalon in full control voluntary motor movements, procedural learning, things that we do like by hand, tying our shoes, routine behaviors or habits are formed in this part of the brain eye movements, cognition or thinking, and emotion. As you can see then, habits happen in a very primitive part of the brain, relatively speaking. So this is why you can teach cats, dogs, even reptiles to do certain little tricks at times. It doesn't require the higher brain functions to get into the habit of doing certain things on certain stimuli. Unfortunately, addiction is thus a very deeply rooted part of our behaviors and brain. Cerebellum at the back of the brain is a finely convoluted, much more than the cerebral cortex. Internally, if you section it, you will see what's called the arbor vitae, or tree of life. These are all different connections going from different processing areas in the cerebellum and keeping everything moving. The cerebral cortices, the top of the brain, developed about 200 million years ago. This is the newest part of the brain. Obviously, it seems like we're overdue for an upgrade. It's responsible for the higher cognitive functions, language, thinking, all related forms of information processing. Other important aspects of the brain, the cerebrospinal fluid surrounds the outside of the brain, acting as a cushion or shock absorber, providing nourishment to the brain. It also drains through the ends of the spinal nerves into the lymphatic system, which ultimately brings that fluid to the heart, where it's redistributed through the body and to the kidneys for excretion. Inside of the brain, there are hollow cavities called ventricles that are also filled with the cerebrospinal fluid. The spinal fluid is produced in these choroid plexuses that are located within the ventricles. The purpose of these big uh, hollow ventricles filled with the fluid is to help absorb any mechanical forces and protect the brain from any real bad trauma.